Well, there are no signs of a global economic recession in the coming 12 months. That's according to BlackRock CEO Larry Fink in an interview with a German business newspaper. Now, Fink's saying that the economy is not great, but it's also not bad. And he's warning that, th that we are in the late phase of an economic growth cycle. Joining us now is Catherine Rooney Vera, he head of research and strategy at Baltic. Catherine, thanks for joining me today. Just what are your thoughts on Larry Fink's comments? Do you also agree that maybe, I guess, where do you think we are right now in this bullish economy? Well, back in December when it was not consensus, that was my view that the U.S. was not on the precipice of recession. And that was what a view that I touted to all of my clients and to many of the media outlets at that point. In December when the S&P had dropped almost 20 percent, factoring in U.S. recession, China trade war and uh, fears on the Fed, I actually recommended long S&P 500, long industrials, long energy, long financials, long emerging markets and long Chinese equities. Now we're up double digits across the board. The question that I'm asking myself and the clients are asking me now is where to? So I agree with Larry Fink. I've agreed with him since December when it wasn't popular. Now, really, no one's asking about U.S. recession anymore. So it's a it's the correct view. It's a little bit late. I think that's the correct view. But again, it, it's, it's easier now to say that when you can see that the market is more internalizing the fact that the U.S. is not on the cusp of recession, in fact, far from it. So then, Catherine, where are you seeing opportunity right now? We're coming off this tremendous rally. You're saying that your clients are asking you where to put their money. What are you recommending people buy? Well, the fact is that we are in the late stages of an economic uh, of the economic expansion. So you do want to defend your upside. You want to defend your profits. And the way you do that, and what I've been recommending to my guys, is by buying puts on your upside in the S&P 500. You can buy December puts, uh, December expiration puts. They're attractively valued. You limit your downside and you maintain your upside. You're going to want to do that for the S&P 500. You're going to want to do that for China. China consumer discretionary is up 37% since we recommended it in December. We do think there's going to be an accord between the U.S. and China. Again, another out of consensus view that we held since December of last year. And now what we want to do is either take profits or defend those profits. The other thing you're going to want to do is increase your um, increase your positions in low correlated assets to um, to the S and P. So if there is volatility, which there's inevitably going to be, uh, and you want to protect your upside, protect your profits, you're going to want to get into you know PE, or you're going to want to get into REITs, or increase some cash. These are ways to protect your portfolio. Um, by staples, by consumer staples, that's another way to do so. That said, I do think that this year is going to be a year where risk reward favors taking on risk. So buy emerging markets, hold emerging markets, um, stay in equities, don't sell. You could increase cash on positions that are up 25, 30%, but I would say stay invested in this market. Hey, Catherine, we had uh, one of our market guests on earlier today. Her name is Courtney Dominguez. She's with Payne Capital Management. I was talking to her about the tech sector, just the tremendous run that we have been seeing. She was warning that the tech sector is way too crowded right now. Maybe now is the time just to take a break. What do you make of that argument? Well, tech, sure. I mean, it has seen a spectacular run after it got um, severely beaten up, right? So if you want to take profits, as I mentioned, it's, it's always good to realize high double-digit profits. Um, especially in a volatile sector such as tech. It is a cyclical, however, and I do think that structurally it's where you want to be over the long term. So certainly it's a good idea to take some profits, but I would say at least maintain some exposure to tech because I do believe that we are in a, a cycle that's structural. And what I mean by that, Shona, is we're in you know the second industrial revolution with technology in this country and in the world, but on steroids. So this is a structural phenomenon of an economy that's increasingly automated, increasingly roboticized. And I think it's important to maintain some exposure in that growing sector of the economy. Hey, Catherine, real quick, just what are your thoughts on earnings season so far? This is going to be the busiest week for the quarter. Lots of talk about the slowdown that we are expected to see. What, what's on the horizon for you? Sure, lots of talk about earnings uh, recession, right? Every every quarter I hear uh, consensus and in the media, and a lot of guys talking about earnings recession. Oh, it didn't happen this quarter or last quarter, but it's going to happen in the next one. So, look, I think that earnings are going to surprise to the upside. Um, I have earnings growth for the full year at eight percent. That's double consensus. So I do think that earnings are going to continue to surprise on the upside because fundamentally, as economists, we look at this and we say, look, if there's growing demand, then corporations respond to that demand. And I think that we are in a virtuous cycle of higher demand, growth in inventories, and, and, and improving uh, earnings. 
uh, from, from U.S. in general. So look, there's certain sectors that you want to play. Industrials are going to continue to outperform. I like financials. I think they've been beaten up um, too much. So I do think that there are certain sectors better than others. But in general, hey, let's stay invested in the S&P 500. I think earnings are going to outperform. All right, Catherine, thank you.